in the hex pace of life and now entrepreneurship, it can be easy to lose sight of the reason that you felt led to actually be in business. Are you struggling to maintain consistency in your God-centered business? And why is it so hard to stay committed to something that you know is from God? And do you feel guilty if you're not staying committed and consistent? Well, maybe it's time to pause, reflect, and realign what is actually happening and how you can turn things around. We've got three transformative principles for you to consider. First, how aligning your values and second, understanding your unique design. And third, focusing wholeheartedly on God's will will bring you motivation and keep you committed to do the things that truly matter. These three principles, when you evaluate them and embrace them, will not only raise your commitment level, but they'll also bring more success in your business. I'm Deneen TV. And this is Mary Lore. Join us as we chat about these three principles that help you realign your commitment to your God-centered business and make it easier to be successful. Uh, I can't wait to talk about this. I, I love I love what's happened to our, our one of our clients, Denise, who really we didn't talk to very much, but no. she used our course to really do things that were that helped her. And I have a quote here she put into our Facebook group and she goes, I went through the calling clarity program and I got clarity. Like those are in big uppercase things. Uppercase, yeah. <laughs> I thought starting a life, I thought starting a life coaching counseling business was the direction that God was leading me. After all, I have a master's degree in mental health counseling. But after going through the calling clarity, God showed me counseling was not my main focus. Fitness is my main focus. Through fitness, the life of coaching counseling will follow. When God showed me this, my mind was blown. I <laughs> so I prayed and I waited for God's direction. And then in God's perfect timing, he gave me the steps I should take. I was obedient, nervous, and excited. And now today, when as she was writing this, was the grand opening of Doing Life 100, aka DL100 Fitness. My first class, Dance Fitness, is this evening, and it's full. Woohoo! <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> yeah, she said woohoo. <laughs> This, you know, this can happen only when we stop doing all the things, get clarity and focus on what God wants to happen. So I hope you're all excited about yeah. this. But before we get into the topic, we want to remind everybody, subscribe to the channel if you're watching. And if you're listening, make sure you follow us, give us the five-star rating. And please do share this episode, whether you're on face, uh, Facebook. YouTube, <laughs> share it to your Facebook friends yeah, hey, and there you go. share it to other people, the podcast, if you're a podcast person. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So, you know, we we talk about these things with a lot with our clients, these three mm -hmm. principles we do, and we find that commitment is an issue that I think many of us have, um, but I think it's because we don't realize what's really going on and then have a strategy to fix it. Yeah, so that's right. And these th these three things that we're going to talk about today really are strategy to help you fix it. So yes. the first one is aligning your values. Yes. So, so what's going on with people that they're feeling like they can't stay committed? I think the first thing is, and we've talked about it before, they're just doing too much, right? Yep. Doing too much, busy, they're saying yes to every opportunity that might sound great. Mm -hmm. but maybe he's not the best. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I think I, when you do these things, you kind of just allow life ha to happen to you. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, but you're, you're just saying yes. You're, you're yeah. Saying like, yes. Like I expect, especially Christian women, because yeah. that volunteer piece, right? right. Oh, you would be the perfect person to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and so we're volunteering more or like our kids, like we're making the cookies to go to the bake sale, whatever it is. Right. Yeah. I know a lot of our people come in and they go, well, I have this business, but I also want to have a nonprofit. I want to be giving back. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I know. And like you said, they say yes to things. They're just, right. they're just, they're doing too much. You can't be committed to 20 things and no. expect to do any of them 
well. No, and I can't. love that. So yeah. that's why we have a values thing of exercise inside of calling clarity, because the strategy is really to say, how, what is God given me as a value? What do I value? Do I value my family? Do I value independence? Do I value creativity? What do I value? And how do I use that as kind of a filter to say yes and no to different yeah. opportunities, to two things that come up? And right. I think it's really, really great to align with our values is a great strategy to start to say, I can be more committed to my business that God's calling me to do because I've aligned these important things. What God is telling me is important. What God has put inside of me that's important, right? Yes, definitely. Definitely. Really. I love the values filter because mm -hmm. you, you know, you don't, it helps you not feel guilty. It really does. Cause you know, your values and you know that you won't be happy and you really won't be that great of help if you're not aligned with your values. I like that because I everybody always asks me, like, how do I know if I'm not working in my values? And I'm going, do you hate going to that meeting? Do you dread having to show up for that thing? Do you just you put it off and procrastinate yeah. like crazy. It probably doesn't align with your values. It's not exactly. something that God really wants you to do. Just because I'm just because you're good at something doesn't mean that you have to do it. Yeah. And I think the other part of it is once we know our values and we know what we're supposed to be doing is really, and I'm gonna just hit this all the time, get a routine, get a yep. routine, and that reflects your values. If if you can oh, go really. through your day and say, what am I, what did I do this today or this week? And write down all of your activities and then look at it and go, why was I doing that? Why was I doing that? Yeah. Why was I doing that? And see which things are really not aligning with what God has called you to do, not giving you, as we say, whether you're required to do it every day, got to take care of your family, right? right? Or it's giving you a return on your investment of time, energy, and money, or it's giving you a reward of some kind, like, you know, making sure you take a walk every day or exercise. Right. That's a right. reward, right? That, that you need to take those things out of your routine or not allow extraneous things to come into your routine. Yeah, that's such that a great sense. exercise idea to... Look past, look on your week and see, what did I do? What did I do? What did I spend time on? And it, mm -hmm. you know, it might really uh, hit you in the face. <laughs> like you really, you spent time wasting time. Um, if you've ever done that with your screen time report, on oh, your phone, yeah. you could do that. And it, you know, mm -hmm. it's like you spent an average of three hours on your phone every yeah. day. And I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like sometimes you're just not aware because you know, yeah life's just happening and we're just doing, doing, doing. Right. And then that, and so I think this really gives us, that gives us focus yes, on, focus. I'm going to do the things that are important, but God has called me to do. And it's, it's a, it's a value to me. It's a value to the yeah. people that I get to serve. And I'm going to create my routine, my daily work around these things. I think it's, I think it's, a great strategy. If you think it's a great strategy, let us know down yeah, in the comments. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the second principle that we're going to talk about, so that was our values alignment, right? The second principle is understanding your unique design. Yes. So this is so cool, but what is going on for people that, what are they feeling? Um, I think one of the main things people feel is they have passion and, uh, and, they, but they think that what they know, what they, what they can do is not enough. Right. I know. I know. I, and I hate that because stop thinking that it's not enough. It's, mm -hmm. If you're passionate about it, it's enough. <laughs> it's... Right. Right. I mean, what I mean by, you might be thinking, well, you know, I don't have enough skill. I don't have, a, I don't have enough knowledge. I know a lot of people go back to, you know, I have to get a certification. Yeah, I have to get, right. I have to get more education about this. I have to, you know, wait till this thing. And so, so they, they try to go into business doing it like somebody else. They, they yeah. are not authentic to themselves. They're not being, they're not being their unique self. So they're feeling that, that 
pressure or that squeeze of being in the competition mode, right? That, that, yeah. that, oh, I'm just not as good at, as that other person. And so they're comparing themselves and, you know, it, it is, they're trying to say, well, I can do this for now. I mean, there's a yeah. lot of things that are, I think are going on in their head. That's really pulling them away from who God has really designed them to be. Right? Right, right. And we talked about that intersection, that, that Venn diagram, what are you good at? What do you love? What breaks your heart? How do you want to serve others? But I think that something, sometimes people just get into something because, oh, well, I'm good with numbers. So let me go be an accountant. And they don't yeah. think through really God's design of them so that they can stay committed to something. Because if you really, if it's not in your values work at wheelhouse, and then you're not really passionate about it, or you really know that you can do it, you're not going to want to do it. No, you're not. You're not. And I have a perfect example is when I thought I'm going to volunteer at the church. And, you know, I have the spiritual gift of administration. So they put me in counting the tithes and counting the cash. And I'm good with numbers, but that is not in my wheelhouse. <laughs> and I thought, okay, I'm going to do this because this is what they're calling me to do. This is what I'm doing for God. And oh my gosh, it was not me. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do it. I, I, I stopped going to church. <laughs> it was terrible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it just wasn't me. It wasn't right. in my soul. And I couldn't, and I ended up quitting it because I couldn't commit to it. Right. I think. I think a lot of a lot of us who are Christian women entrepreneurs and business owners, we have a lot of different talents and gifts and abilities, but they don't always plug into church. And that mm -hmm. is um, you don't, you're not you're not being utilized to the best of your ability. And I think that's why God calls us into business I, that, right. so that we can utilize those even those spiritual gifts in our business. And by understanding God's design of us. Um, what we call the mosaic masterpiece. That's the strategy. That's the strategy. Understanding, finding out how yeah. God has designed you to be equipped to do what he's asking you to do. It's understanding yourself better and not in a, I'm, uh, I'm so in introspective no, no. that, you know, not in that weird woo woo kind no, of sense. No, no, no. Yeah. It's, 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 it's almost like aha moments. Like, oh, I never realized that. Right. Yeah. I never realized that about myself. Um, I, I think about when we talk with our clients about their strengths and we use the strength finders leadership book. And so many times over and over, I've heard that, oh, I thought these were all my weaknesses. Yes. These were the things I needed to work right. on to get better at. And it's like, no, these are actually your strengths yep. that you've been mashing down. I you know. know. You've and been not mashing. knowing how yes. to use them. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And when you use these things, your unique gifts, that's when you stand out. Mm -hmm. That is, you know, when you stop trying to be everybody else and swimming in that red ocean, we keep on going back because we love the book, blue ocean, red, red yeah. ocean, blue ocean. We love the book. And so you're not in those shark infested waters. You are in a nice, peaceful, clear blue ocean because you yeah. are following the way you are designed. Exactly. And it, and it, exactly. And it helps you create your perfect business. So yeah. even if you are in a very highly competitive field or, or industry, you still have the way to stand out because yeah. you've created a perfect business for you. And not just because of your talents and giftings and abilities, but even in your personality and the way that you yeah. want to do your business, you know, maybe right. you don't want to have a weekly group session. Maybe you don't want to, you know, be on zoom, who knows, you know, right. it's something that you can do. And it's really important to know these things about you, why that's important to you. And, that's what we do in the Calling Clarity course. We look at your values. We look at the things you've overcome. We look at, at really your strengths, yeah. your talents, those things you have gotten certificates or learning for, or even just the experience of having your 10,000 hours, so they say, right? Yeah. Of Like you may not have a degree, but you might have done enough 
reading. I always say I've done enough business reading. I think I have an MBA at this point, you know, <laughs> it's just like, ah, I know I have learned so much and, and, and how you can, we bring it all together into that 360 degree view tool. Yes. And, and we give you a snapshot of who you are. And if you can't read the tool, that's what we're there for. Yeah, I can help you read the tool, you read it, <laughs> interpret it, use it. Yeah, yep. exactly. And I just love it because we're taking, and that's what we call it the mosaic masterpiece model. It, we're taking those pieces of your life and we're pulling them down into a new, I say, serving platter. We're creating a new mosaic serving platter. So you're serving your clients with your design, the way yeah. God has made you. It's so unique to you. It can't help but like stand out I in know. front of anybody else. Yeah, you stand out as being your best. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. So yeah. let's get some feedback from our listeners, from our watchers here. So I want to know, we want to know what's going on in your day-to-day -day life that you hadn't realized might be affecting your commitment to what God is calling you to do in your business. Did either one of these strike a chord with you? Are you doing things that you now know are kind of outside your values? Mm -hmm. it, or is there something that you really don't understand all your wonderful, unique capabilities, uh, that mosaic that God has designed you to be? Do you not understand it? We'd love to know what's yeah. happening for you. Let us know down in the comments what you're thinking and how you are responding to all of this. Yeah. And we'd love that. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about the third principle that affects commitment. And that is focusing wholeheartedly on God's will. You know, Ooh. I know. <laughs> well, you know, what's going on for people, Mary? Going on? They're again, they're doing all the things they're trying to do all the things. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're getting burnt out and mm -hmm. God doesn't want you to do all the things or become burnt out. Yeah. Uh, I think about that big, I think about it in this way. It's like, it's like you're a, a big lake, your, your life, your day to day is like a huge lake and what you're doing, but it's only like this thick. It's only like an inch thick, right down or deep. And what you're doing is you're just making all these little tiny splashes yeah. all over. You're not really making any kind of big, deep impact. You're going ping, 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 yep. ping. And yep. all it is doing is burning you out. And I always say, imagine just not doing so many things, doing one thing and, and, and just being able to make that deeper impact in something that is way more deep, impactful than anything else. Right. Right. Yes, definitely. And when we're when we're splashing around like that, we don't even know when to turn off. No. Oh my <laughs> gosh. We just keep on ding, 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 ding. We just keep on going to one thing to the next. And we don't know when to turn it off. And again, God doesn't want that. He doesn't want the burnout or just just to keep on going like a like a on a hamster wheel, just right in circles. <laughs> and in our society, we have that hustle culture. We have yeah. it's almost like you're wearing a badge to say, yeah. I'm busy, or you have this huge thing across your forehead going, Don't bother me, I'm busy. Don't bother right. me, I'm busy. And it's like that's not what God calls us to be. He wants us to be relational with people and we have to stop and slow down and listen and to be relational. Right. Right. So that yeah. goes into the, what else is happening is that even if you're busy, I think people are just aren't prioritizing yeah. right. the right things. Right. They're, yep. they're, they're making everything the top layer yep. of this is a priority. Exactly. <laughs> you cannot, everything is not a priority. You can't make that. You have to prioritize your tasks. Like which ones are the most important which ones are going to generate income mm -hmm. you have to make those priorities and do those first kind of like the whole eat the frog yeah like, you know if the whole day you know you gotta do the thing that is most important and eat that mm -hmm. frog and get it over with <laughs> right right it's like I just got this image in my head of like uh, those old pinball machines uh-huh you know it's like yeah. you you're you're motivated for the day you <laughs> But then all you're doing is batting yourself I around know. all day long. I know. And it, it's not prioritizing anything. You're just pinging all over the place. And eventually you are just, like you said, we already said, you're going to burn out and right. you're not going to be any good for God. No. And 
we, the one thing I think people do when they're not prioritizing, they forget to prioritize God first. I know it is so true. And you know, you might start the day thinking, oh, okay, I'll do my Bible study later tonight. Well, tonight you're going to be exhausted <laughs> or I'll do it at, you know, whatever at noon, whatever. No, you have to prioritize your time with God mm -hmm. and make that yeah. the first thing that you do or, or. If you can't do it first off, do it at a time where you have prioritized. I'll do this at this time. And right, exactly. No, I mean, don't I waver. think I I think that that and if we're not meeting with God, we we're not showing that we really rely on Him and trust Him for the results in our business and in all the things that we're doing. I think we're just we're just skipping by Him. And and, yeah. and like I I like to say. I like giving God the best time of my day. So if that's your morning person, obviously, if you're a night person, yeah. yes. If you have small children and you have to wait till they're down for a nap, but yeah. it's all in writing it in your planner and prioritizing that time and meeting, you know, making the appointment and keeping the appointment right. with God, right? right? So the strategy here, it could be a whole mindset shift yeah. for a lot of people, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it could be that, we and our philosophy is that we grow our faith to fuel our business. So we also believe that we're serving God through our businesses. So we don't need to ping around making those tiny splashes, doing all the things. We right. have to understand what God's calling us to do, especially through our businesses, and see that as our way to serve him because we're serving our clients we're serving our team members we're serving our our, our collaboration partners yeah. whatever it is that's the mindset shift and we're we can let go of some things right we can we can <laughs> in my example that i told earlier like you don't have to volunteer at church you might not be it might not be the place for you to use you know, your God-given skills and, and to be working in your values and everything, you, you know, you have to go where you're going to be, feel good about it and be appreciated and want to continue for the long term. I know. And that's the thing. It's not about I'm suffering for Jesus. It's about, <laughs> it's, I mean, nobody wants to hear that either. No, I mean, I mean, no. yes, we suffer enough and we're going to have enough crises and we're going to have enough right. things happen to us. But if we can get this part of our life together, if we can do our best in this thing, then the rest of the things that happen to us, we're going to be have learned. I mean, God right. is God is giving us what we need. He's growing us in our faith. He is making us more like his son. But we have to be in those lessons is using our business to do that. And, and so the mindset is I am serving God. It's yeah. also the prioritization. And I've talked about the Very simplify important. your day. Like think about what's required. What's a return? What's a reward? Look at your week. What are you doing? Get some of those things away. Do I really need to do that? Do I just because I can? Should right. I be doing that? Think about that for yourself. We don't want you to should all over yourself I saying, know. well, I should do that. And I should do that. And I should do that. And I should do that. No, you stop and go, God, what have you given me of my values? What is my unique design? And what is it that I should be doing and focusing on that is in your will? Because we know when we're in God's will, we feel that satisfaction that right. we're doing the right thing, even right. if it's hard. Yeah. We're doing it. Yes. You know? I love that. Yeah. So this has been kind of a short discussion today, and I yeah. hope that it's giving you some things to think about as you take your own time to reflect and realign with what's going on for you right now and use your journal. Yes. <laughs> and, and now I hope that we've given you some strategies to really see how you can turn things around to really be more committed to your business because we know it is hard. Yeah. And we know that, that these things can help you. We know that really it is about aligning your values. It is about understanding your unique design and being able to focus wholeheartedly on God's will, that is what's going to make you successful. These are things that we know are going to bring motivation and they're going to keep you committed to the things that matter to God for your business. I think that's an important thing. So if you'd like some help 
like some support in raising your level of commitment to your business, I'd like to invite you to a clarity call with me. Um, we'll put that link in the description so that we can have a chat. So make sure that you go do that today. <laughs> yes. And thanks for joining us today on the Truth of Business show. This is Mary Lore. And this is Deneen TV. Have a great rest of your day. And as always, be filled to overflowing.